Hi, I'm Candace Felice, and this Community Life in Northeast Georgia featured podcast, Elahi, which means Earth in Cherokee, is a retreat center located in Satinacoochee, Georgia. Elahi's mission is to be a home rooted in nature for deepening human awareness, facilitating the healing of mind and body, and transforming individuals and society. Now joining me in the studio to discuss Elahi is the Executive Director Eve Cook. Eve, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Candace. Eve, your journey to discovering this beautiful place in Sati is both inspiring and a personal journey of healing for yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to find this location in Sati. Yes, it is definitely a personal journey. Back in 2009, I was diagnosed with cancer and It was supposed to be a cancer that was easy to treat and get through the treatment and then move on with your life. I was 35. So we went through all of that and cancer went away. And then within a few months, it came back again. So there started a journey of four years of refractory Hodgkin's lymphoma treatment. And with people telling me that there was no chance of cure. And so our family sought a place to heal and also to look for the future and see if we could have a a perfect future, what would it look like? And in my mind, in my husband's mind, we've always wanted to move to the mountains and we've always wanted to have a place where people can gather and retreat and have community. And so in this journey, we found ourselves with the inspiration of my mother and my father supporting us, finding this land in Sati. And even though I was still undergoing cancer treatments at the time, we got the property and spent a year healing from the brutal cancer treatments. And the land helped us. We would walk and make trails. I would sit by the waterfall. The land really supported the healing, not only for me, but my family. And with that whole process, all we could think about and talk about was how we could share it with other people going through hard times. So as I was healing and recovering, Elohi was growing in our hearts and our mind space. And we've been doing small retreats for a few years now, and we've been building to open up in a bigger capacity because as of now, I'm cancer free and we're ready to just keep going and providing a place for people to come and spend a weekend or a week and take part in retreats that can heal that can help them connect with nature, themselves, with other people who have gone through similar traumas. So here we are now, and we're opening in a fuller capacity in May and looking forward to having retreats for people to come and experience. It's an experiential place. First of all, congratulations on being totally cancer-free. There are many different aspects to what the retreats that you offer there at Elahi. What are some of the things that you offer as far as the facility? How many people can it accommodate? We offer a range of retreats. And to me, it's very important to meet people where they are and what speaks to them, the language that speaks to them. And so my dream is to have a catalog of offerings where people can see whether it's meditation, yoga, Qigong, art, dance, writing, sustainability, nature experiences. These are all things that really speak to me and I hope that can speak to people for them to be able to come and experience that type of healing and growth, personal development. Our facility can accommodate up to 56 people. Mm -hmm. And with that comes beautiful views of the mountain tops. We're on the top of the mountain, and so you can see 360 degree views of these uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, which is spectacular. At night, the stars are just incredible. We have a natural pond where the frogs sing to you every night. There is a hot tub. We have a beautiful studio where yoga and meetings can take place and over two miles of hiking trails. Are the accommodations like you would go to most camps with bunk beds or or do you have rooms where entire families can occupy with a you know a regular full bed and Mm -hmm. some trundle beds that's a good question so we've built seven cottages we call them and each cottage has six rooms 
And so the two front rooms are like a typical hotel room. They have either a king bed or two twin beds and a private bathroom. So this is great for a couple or friends that would like to come together or someone who just wants their own room with their own bathroom. We also have the other four rooms and the cottages are very small. They have just a twin bed and they share a bath with one other person. And the reason we did this, we've done a lot of research on other retreat centers. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the people that come to retreats like these are people, they come by themselves and they want to be in solitude, but they don't mind sharing a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you have your own room and it's at a lower price point. We also have tent camping. We have platforms to bring your own tent. And then we also have a tent put up with a cot in there. So we were wanting to really appeal to all of the different price points, and Mm -hmm. we don't want to make it exclusive in that way. Now, although this is offered to groups, can individuals also come during the week or just block out time for themselves? That is definitely one of our goals going forward. We would love to have this open seven days a week, 365 days a year where people can come and retreat, whether they're a part of a retreat or not. Right now, we're just offering days before and days after the retreats for that, but we definitely want that to be a part of it. Will you have clinical psychologist or will you have therapists there for some of the other workshops that you will offer outside of art therapy? All of the workshops are led by licensed professionals who can hold the group space. That is important to me, too, to make sure that the participants will feel cared for by someone who knows how to facilitate those type of retreats. When designing Elahi, what were the most important aspects of the building itself that you wanted to incorporate? Oh, that's a good question. So much of what we're doing is wanting to be very aware of the land itself and honor the land itself. We are very aware that the land has been gold mined and has been forested and So we want to make sure that we make every effort that we can to honor what the land can bring and also bring some healing and some reciprocity for what it is giving us. So the buildings that we're doing now, we've set them down on the mount below the ridge top so you can see the natural views. But also we've done a lot of water catchment system. So we have the toilets and the landscaping and the pond are being filled from the catchment from the buildings. So we're working on sustainability. We've worked for, with a group from Atlanta with permaculture and wanting to really uh, bring back a lot of the landscape and natural environment, um, native plants plants that work together, being very conscious of honoring this sweet, sweet land that has given us so much. As you were going through your trial by fire, because cancer really is something that it not only affects the patient, but it affects the entire family. Yes. What was it that kept you moving forward when there were days when you really didn't want to lift your head off the pillow? Oh, man, that's a good question. That's what brings tears to my eyes because family is important. And it's that permission to just be who you are. And that support and that love. And if it weren't for my family, I wouldn't be here today. It's still very tender. Yes. Was it your parents that gave you the idea that Sati would be the perfect place for you to retreat and restore? Well, actually, it's interesting how it came to be. I had found out that my initial treatment didn't work, and I'm not really a depressive person at all. I'm, in general, a happy, so lucky person. But when I found that out, it left me with some deep sorrow. And so my mother, in an effort to lift me up, said, let's look how the future could be. What are your dreams? What are your desires? Let's not look about what the doctors are saying. And so I said, I want to move to the mountains. And I want to have a place where people can gather and retreat. This has always been a dream of mine. Mm -hmm. And so we just, for fun, looked on the internet on our iPad and found some places to visit. And my husband and I traveled around and looked at places. And it was fun to get my head out of what was going on to Mm -hmm. go looking around. But when we found this land and saw tea, it really, there was something very special that spoke to us. And um, it's hard to explain. And I think the people who come here also feel it. And I don't know if it's just me. There is that something special. And uh, 
my dad, the visionary that he is, said, well, we're just going to get this. And if it's all over it ever is, is for our family, then that's what it will be. But in our minds, let's look for the future and see. Let's dream of building. So we did. And I went into quarantine and I couldn't be in public. And I spent months there on the land with my mask walking around. <laughs> and... um <laughs> And we ended up building a house up here, my husband and I, even though I still had cancer and didn't know if I would be alive to live in the house. But we just said yes. And I think just saying yes to the possibility was amazing and transformative and having the support around me for people to allow that saying yes. So we did. And now here we are. And people are coming. And hopefully they can find some of that healing too. That's my hope. This place is too good not to share it. It's just too good not to share. Now you yourself come from an academic background. You have a mm -hmm. PhD in engineering science. Biomedical science, yes. Did all of the education that you acquired over the years give you any pause? Because it kind of goes different in a different direction <laughs> than the spiritual journey that you've been on that led you to discover Elohi. Yes, it is a different, it kind of seems like lifetimes ago that time, but then I sit and think about the similarities. I was raised in a family where my parents kind of pioneered the functional medicine industry. So I've been in the medical world for my whole life. And to grow up in a family where I have parents who have created opportunities for incredible healing on the, the medical side. And then I followed in those footsteps and saw the impact. It's a lot of chemistry and, and the medicine part of it, but I feel like this is just kind of the next step. This is just an extension of that healing and the offering and trying to help make the world a better place by offering tools that people can use for healing. What's your most favorite spot to go to to meditate on the land? Oh my, it's coming up right now. The, um, <laughs> there's a beautiful spot I call the Green Cathedral. And it is at the kind of the valley where the creek goes through the property right before it dips down the waterfall. And the ferns come out right about now and it lasts all through summer. And summer's my favorite season. And it's this amazing fern forest, we call it. And it's just full of this green, lush life and energy. And my dog always goes hyper dog in that <laughs> area. And the, at night, right at dusk, the fireflies come out in force. And it's just magical. It's just magical. People think about the different foods. And we know that food as well has healing properties. There are special herbs that can be used to facilitate and allowing the body's internal organs to restore and replenish mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. Have you found any of those herbs on your property? Oh, well, we have found a lot of gems on the property. I actually, just this weekend, we had a true nature retreat and harvested some of the white pine inner bark and made a tea for the group in the middle of the woods. And we dined on the tea, sipped on the tea. Little things like that are sweet reminders of the healing that the land offers us. Tell us a little bit about the chef and the different foods that he'll prepare for these different retreats. Yes, thank you. That is so important. A lot of facilitators that I've talked to who are looking to come to Elohi, that's one of the first questions they ask is, what's the food like? <laughs> this is a very important part of the retreat. And so I am so thrilled to say that that is also an important thing to us too. And we have a chef who pays a lot of attention to detail about serving foods that are are wholesome, that as much local as we can get. We love our local farms around Sati. Oh my goodness. I never knew coming from the city that there would be such a wealth of um, farms and healthful and rich foods around here. So we have that that we offer. And it's food that is made with love and made with intention and knowing that people are coming here with sometimes grief, sometimes with a lot of emotion and food needs to be nourishing and healthy. And so that's what we provide. And we've gotten rave reviews about our foods. We post pictures on Facebook and someone said, did anyone else zoom in to the plate to see what was on the <laughs> plate? Because I missed that food. <laughs> so we're proud of our food and I'm proud of our executive chef, Susan Lotus. 
And as you were saying, you were speaking of your husband and how his strength and support during your time of healing Mm -hmm. was instrumental in your recovery. Mm -hmm. Did he also come from a science background? Well, he is definitely my rock. And uh, I was diagnosed a month before we got married. So the first four years of our marriage was dealing with cancer treatment. So we, we joke about how, you know, we talk about for better, for worse. Well, we've gotten the for worse out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going for the for better for now. And it's such a sweet time. His background is not in science at all. He's a hands-on guy. He is one of those guys that can fix anything. So he is behind the scenes doing and building and overseeing our big project of making this uh, physical location a creation and uh, so grateful for that. He's definitely um, solid and strong and people notice that his subtle energy is behind the scenes and it's a very caregiving in that way. Ella, he is a 501c3 nonprofit. Being that it is a nonprofit, I'm sure that you do fundraising or you leave it open to the public to donate to the work that you're doing? Well, something that's very dear to my heart because of the things I've been through is to find ways to have people come here who can't otherwise afford it. And a lot of times retreats can be exclusive because it does cost quite a bit of money to come to these things. So we've decided to make this business a nonprofit in that we can help support and aid and have fundraising and scholarships available for those who are in need. And with that, we're still very new, so we haven't fully developed these programs. But in my big vision, and I have lots of dreams for how LAHE can go, but I do want to have programs for people who have suffered for things like cancer or other trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, grief and loss, chronic pain, you know, all these different ways. We all are human. There is no escaping trauma, I think, by living in this human body. I had cancer, but that's just one way. And so I want to develop programs where people can come and find community with others who have have experienced similar things and then heal from that. So with that, we need to find some ways to help assist people in coming. So that is what drives me for the nonprofit and fundraising and scholarship. What are some of the ways Or have you even put into practice some of the ways that our listeners can donate to your organization? Well, you can look at our website, LOHE.org, and contact me and donate just directly. But one of the most fun things we've had is a fundraiser called a -a hike-a-thon. And, you know, you've heard of Mm walk-a-thons or um, marathon, you know, these things, these ways that people raise money. But we had a -a hike-a-thon a few years ago to raise money for a group called First Ascents. And it was the most fun. There were about 100 people that came out, and everybody raised money based on how many miles they could hike in a four-hour period. And so we hiked over 300 miles that day, collectively, on the property. And then we had a big party. We had barbecue and bluegrass and a big bonfire on the top of the mountain. And we raised over $10,000. It's a win for everybody. People feel uplifted. You get to have community. You get to have fun and also raise money for a good cause. So I'm hoping to do another hike a coming up. Eve, if you could put into a synoptic phrase what these past six years have done for you and what you are hoping Elohi will offer to those who come in and go back out into the world, what do you think that would be? Well, these past six years have been an incredible learning experience in the most delightful way. It's like my life's dharma has been uncovered. My path has been shown to me, and I just hope and wish for everyone who comes here to see the healing potential and allow that to bathe them and experience the joy that can come from letting go and saying yes. Well, Eve, it has been delightful speaking with you today and learning more about the Elahi Retreat Center. Again, Elahi is a 501c3 nonprofit that offers restoration to your soul and body. Eve, I thank you for coming in. And again, congratulations on your healing. And we look forward to hearing more about Elahi in the upcoming months. 
Thank you so much, Candace. This is really a pleasure. To find out more about Elahi and the different retreats that it offers or to see the beautiful pictures of the location, you can log on to elahi.org. 